we're going to talk about something very important today. How to look smart. Now, one way to look smart is to wear an AOPS hoodie. Of course, everybody in my office wears an AOPS hoodie, so I don't look especially smart just by wearing the hoodie. But one way to look especially smart is to solve a hard math problem. That's what we're going to do today. And here's our problem. We start with a rectangular box. Now, for those of you playing along at home, this, this is a rectangular box. So you want to have a rectangular box. Oh, you don't have one. Oh, okay. Well, here, catch. You, you didn't catch it. Oh, that's okay. You'll have to make your own box. It should have volume 4,320, surface area 1704, and the sum of its edges should be 208. You got that? Okay, so you can go ahead and you can make that box. And here's the problem. If we increase each of the edges by one, what's the volume of the new box? So there's a problem. Now, this is a team round problem. And if this is the problem you get on the team round, all your teammates are going to be looking at you. They're going to be looking at you. So you want to look smart because you know, they're all looking at you. So this is the problem you have to do. They're all looking at you. You want to look smart. You can't just sit there and do nothing because this is what doing nothing looks like doesn't look smart at all. So we have to do something, and it has to look smart. It's very important. You have to at least look like you know what you're doing. So what looks smart? What looks smart? And a box. Pictures. Pictures look smart. You always look smart when you're drawing a good picture. Now, it has to be a relevant picture, right? You're not just going to draw like a unicorn jumping over a rainbow or something like that. You want to draw a picture that has something to do with the problem. Of course, here we want to draw a box. So we'll draw a box, and we'll, we'll try to draw a decent box and maybe maybe take our time doing it. Because, you know, while we're drawing the box, it at least looks like we know what we're doing. Looks like we're making some progress. Let's see, we got th these sides here. And while we're drawing, it's not obvious that we don't really know how to solve the problem yet. But uh, there's our box. It's not a particularly pretty box, but it'll do. There's our box. And we still don't know how to solve the problem. What should we do? We need something else that looks smart. What else looks smart? Variables. Variables look smart. So we'll put variables on here. Uh, we'll give variables to the edges of the box. So we have our dimensions. There's x. We'll call that one y, and, and this one's z. And once you have variables, you can make equations. And equations look really smart. So let's see here. We have the volume. The volume is just x times y times z. So that gives us one equation. x times y times z is 4320. And the surface area, that gives us another equation. You know, this front face here is x times y. The back one's x times y. The top and the bottom are y times z, and this face and the face on the other side, that's x times z. So there's two of each of x times y, x times z, and y times z. And that's our entire surface area, which we know is 1704. And then we get an equation from the sum of the edges. There are four of these vertical x's, there are four of these horizontal y's, and then there are four of these front to back edges that are length z. So four times x plus y plus z, that's the sum of all the edges, which is 208. Now this 2 and this 4 here, they're annoying. We can, make these, we can make these equations simpler just by dividing them out. And we like simple. So we'll just write those over here. We can't really do anything special with the volume yet. So we will just, we will just leave, that, leave that as it was. We'll divide this by 2, and we'll have x, xy plus xz plus yz. Divide by 2 there, we get 852. We divide this by 4, we get x plus y plus z. And it's good while we're scribbling all this down, right? We've got all these equations on the paper. We look really smart. That's one of the nice things about writing all these equations down. We look like we're getting somewhere. We look like we know what we're doing. Now we've got all these equations, and we're stuck. Oh, no, we're stuck. I mean, we could just start guessing numbers, guessing x, y's, and z's, but there's tons of different groups of three numbers that add up to 52, and then you have to test, do all this arithmetic. Uh, we could substitute in, and we could start scribbling lots and lots more stuff, but at some point, you know, you go from looking smart to looking ridiculous when you're just writing the same thing over and over. We need something smarter. What's smart? What else is smart? Doing things backwards. You know, if you can do something backwards, you must be awesome at doing it forward. So doing things backwards looks really smart. And doing things backwards in a math problem, that means starting from what you actually want to try to figure out and trying to work backwards to what you already know so you can get the answer. So we're going to try that here. We're going to, we're going to try to go backwards. 
So let's see, increase each of the edges by one. We're going to separate our forwards from our backwards. We don't want to get them confused, so we'll separate them for now. We increase each of the edges by one. So we'll have x plus one, y plus one, and z plus one. Those will be our edge lengths. And we need the volume. So the volume is just the product of those three. x plus one times y plus one times z plus one. And this at least, at the very least, this gives us something to do to look smart, because we can start multiplying this out, and that looks clever even though we don't really know if it'll get us anywhere. So the way we multiply these out is we'll just multiply these last two out first. We'll leave the x plus 1 there. And if you did the activity sheet, you know how to multiply these two out. You have y times z and then y times 1. Then we'll take the 1 and multiply it by the z and the 1. It's just a distributive property. So we'll multiply that out. We get y times z. y times 1 is y. 1 times z is z. 1 times 1. That one's easy. That's just 1. Now we can multiply out again. We'll again use the distri distri distributive, man, that's a tough word, distributive property. Multiply x by all those, 1 by all those. So we'll multiply x by each of these. We get x, y, z, x times y, hey, x times y, z. We know that. Wow, something smart. We got something smart. Let's see if we get anything else smart. x times y, z is x, y, z. x times y is x, y. x times z is x, z. And I'm going to leave a space now because I know what's coming next. I see x, y, I see x, z. I'm hoping there's a y, z out there somewhere. So I'll take my x times my plus 1. I have plus x over here. And then 1 times y, z. There's that y, z. We knew it was coming. 1 times y, 1 times z. That gives me my plus y, my plus z. And 1 times 1 is 1 all day long. And look at that. We've seen all these things before. x, y, z. That's just 43, 20 xy plus xz plus yz. Those three together, they're right here. We know that that added together is 852. And then we have x plus y plus z. We already know what that is. That's 52. And then plus 1. 52 and 8, 52, that's 904. Add that on to 4320. We get 5224. Add the 1. 5,225 is the new volume. How about that? That is that turned out to be pretty smart. We had no idea what we were doing. We just did something. Maybe that's the key to being smart. Is you just do something. You try something and it turns out to be smart. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of work. Looks like it's a whole lot of work just to look smart. I mean, You'd rather just be smart. That'd be a lot easier. Well, I know what you're really thinking. You're not really that interested in actually being smart. You just like an easier way to look smart, and that'll be good enough. Let's talk about that. How can you just look smart in an easy way? You don't, you don't want to have to do all this work to look smart. You'd rather just, just look smart. So the first step, very important, is where are you looking? You can't look sideways, right? Because if you look sideways, it looks like you're cheating. Looks like you're looking off the next person. That doesn't look smart because cheating is not smart. You could look down, but then you look sad. And sad people never look smart. So you can't, you can't look down. Try looking up. You look up. You look, it's like you're a visionary. You're, you're looking at something in the sky. Maybe the answer is there. You know, you know it's really working. It's looking up. It's really working when other people are looking up too. And they look up and they're like, what's that guy looking at? So go ahead, try it now. Well, what are you looking at? Yeah, see? That's good. That's good. All right, so we're going to look up. We're going to look up. Now, what else do people do to look smart? They talk. They run their mouths. Now, for most people, that just doesn't work, right? It's kind of unfortunate. They're running their mouth. They're thinking they're looking smart. But we're going to try it. We're going to try it. Maybe we'll get lucky. But now, when we're talking, we need someone to talk to. It's the middle of a test. You can't talk to other people. So we're just going to talk to ourselves, right? You just talk to yourself, and that's probably okay. It's probably better that way because... Who are we kidding? That's the only way you can get any intelligent conversation around here. So we're going to talk to ourselves. We're going to look up, talk to ourselves, and we need something to talk about, something that might sound smart. Props. You always look smart when you're sitting here and you're playing with something. We're going to use a box, of course, because the problem's about a box. So we've got a prop. It's a box. It's got a prop to talk about. We're going to look up, and we're going to talk, and here's how it goes. We're looking up. we got a prop. we got a box. Let's see, we're going to increase the edges by one. We've got, we've got my box here. We're going to increase the edge by one. means go up this way one, this way one, go out the side one. What's that look like? What's that look like? Oh, so if I'm going to increase the edge by one here, it's like taking the space and expanding it out by one. 
I know what that looks like. It's like it just expanded it out. So we'll just pop on a new face there. And there we go, expanded it out by one. And we can do the same thing in this way and, and back this way. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and tack on these expanded faces. Oops, that's the wrong one. Expand this way and expand this way. There we go. And I've got a box. That's not a box. I've got these little grooves here. So I've got these little spaces here that are empty. I need to fill those. Hmm. Well, we'll just fill those. So I got to put in little strips, and that'll fill those out. That'll fill those out nicely. I got a little strip here. I can tack that on right in here. And let's see, that goes right there. I make sure I get the right ones in the right places. Got one on this edge. Got one over here. Fill that groove up just nice. All right. And I got one more over there. And now that I put all my edges on, I have a box. Uh, I don't have a box. There's a corner missing. There's a corner. It's almost a box. Fortunately, I have a little blue corner. How about that? So look at that. Now I got my prop. I put together. I started with my box. I expanded out the edges. And now look at that. I got another box. I got another box. And I have the answer. Oh my goodness. This is so cool. Look at this. I got my box, right? We want to find the volume of the new box. There's the original box, the white one, right? We know what the volume is. You know, the volume is just the product of the original edges. We're given the volume. That's easy. How about this green face right here? The thickness is just one because we only expanded by one. So the volume of this face right here, this piece we added on right there, is this times this. And that product is just the area of the original face, right? We took the same face and stretched it out by one. So the, this times this is just the area of this original face. Same goes for here. Same goes for here. So the volume, the sum of the volumes of these three pieces is numerically equal to the sum of the areas of these three faces. These three faces are just half the surface area of the original box, right? You got one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, right? So these three together are just half the original surface area. So we take the surface area, divide by two, and we get the volume of these three pieces. Well, how about these little orange strips? These little orange strips, well, each one, two of the dimensions are one. This is one, this is one. And then the length here, well, that's just one of the edges of the original box. So the volume of this numerically is equal to one of the edges of the original box. So the volume of this plus the volume of this plus the volume of this, well, that's just the sum of the edge lengths of the original box. Now, we know the sum of all the edges is 208. And then when we sum all the edges, we add each of the lengths four times. So the volume of these three pieces, each one of them is equal to numerically equal to a length of the original box, is just a quarter of the sum of the edge lengths of all the edges of the box. So all you have to do is take this and divide by four, and we get the volume, the total volume of these three orange pieces. And then we have our little corner cube. That's the easy one. One by one by one, its volume is just one. So to get the volume of this box, we take the volume of the box, which we're given, we take half the surface area, which we're given, we take a quarter of the sum of the edge lengths, we're given that too, and then we just add one at the end. It's pretty clever, that's pretty amazing. And that, that, that's how you look smart, right? It's figuring out that this is just a geometric way to do all this mess right here. Yeah, that's how you look smart.